Bonjour, peeps. Hi, this is Neshi Lokat. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page for the morning live stream um, for the card draw information. It's Tuesday. I'm sorry, not Tuesday. It's Wednesday, Wednesday, August 22nd. Um, and it's a beautiful day here in in uh, Toma, Wisconsin. We have blue skies and sunshine. It's a tad bit cold, however. <laughs> I got When I got up this morning, a little after 6, um, it was 48 degrees. Yes, I said 48 degrees. <laughs> it, it was a little chilly. I mean, right now it's about 65 degrees out. And... Uh, yeah, it was it's it's chilly enough to have like long pants on and socks, right? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, we're heading into fall, I do believe. <laughs> so anyway, it, it is gorgeous here this morning. Um just to walk outside and, and feel that 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 crispness, you know. Um it feels good. It says Take a, a warm cup of coffee and go stroll outside through the, the grass and the gardens and such. And yeah. Yep. There it is. Hey, Polly Joe. Good morning, Polly Joe. And Elise is here too. That means possibly Mary Ann's watching. Good morning, ladies. I'm so glad you're with me this morning for the card draw information. It's good stuff. Uh, there, there is a card that was drawn today that I, I haven't worked with before, so I can't wait to share it with you. Elise says, I love it when it's cooler. Yeah, you know that um, it's you can feel that crispness in that in the morning air. And it kind of and it, it reminded me of fall this morning. Um, that's for sure. You know, I also I, sh I also want to put out there um, that um, thinking about and um, praying for um, those people here in Wisconsin, um, my home state, uh, we we had you know rain the other day was that yesterday day before I think it was the day before and um, down near Madison which is our capital in the southern part south, south central part of the state um, they got like ten or eleven inches of rain and so there was like massive flooding down near the Madison area so and I, I've got loads of friends down there so thinking about you guys and praying that you're all safe and that. Uh, um, you know, if you did get some flooding, that it that it was minimal and um, that uh, you don't have to deal with a lot of that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Julie's here. Yay, Julie's in the house. Shh, she's at work listening. <laughs> That's all right. I used to do the same thing when I worked for the state of Wisconsin. There wasn't uh, live streams then, but, you know, those uh, internet radio shows and and uh, talk shows and that kind of stuff. Couldn't do it on my on the on the computer because it was, you know, everybody could see it. <laughs> but I would have my my earbuds on and I would have something on listening to or music, one of the two. So this morning's card draw, I tell you what, it was interesting. Um, so the first card that came, um, you know, that sits. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There, there's jets going over. Um, yeah, it was kind of loud. They're fl flying pretty low. Uh, we, where we live is between two two full time military um, posts. One is Fort McCoy, and um, and the other one is Volk Field, which is the Air National Guard here in Wisconsin. And they do regular flights uh, for for um, practice, you know, and, and building air hours and that kind of thing. Between Madison, which is the um, the headquarters, and um, they fly from Madison to Volk Field, and then from sometimes from Volk Field to Fort McCoy, which means they fly right over the top of us. <laughs> and one of our neighbors uh, works in the. Uh, I think he works and no, maybe not. That was a different friend. We had a friend that worked in the, the, the towers. And sometimes when we first moved here, we'd be doing meditations for a class and um, they would be really loud. And so when Paul would call in to check in, I'd say, could you call so-and-so and ask them if it's possible to move 
the flight a little south so they're not flying over the house while we're doing the meditations. And I was basically kidding, but yeah, he actually moved it one time, which was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, they they were flying kind of low. You know, they're loud, very, very loud. <laughs> Polly goes, yep, you could hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Julie's saying, so if I'm silent, you know why. <laughs> she goes, LOL. <laughs> Yep, we know. We got gotcha. you. And so you can always um, ask your questions in the chat and we'll, or your statements in the chat and we'll share those out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the card draw. The very first card that was drawn this morning uh, that was, uh, I was shuffling and literally kind of popped out of the deck, right? Um, it is, it's the first card that goes on a layout and it goes on the right hand side because we get two cards and the first card is it carries the male energies and so taking in the information through our our mental mind our logic our thoughts and that side of the card layout represents grandfather sky okay and so here is the first card that came out the heptagon heptagon seven sided Honestly, I have not worked with the heptagon. So it was it was kind of like cool, brand new kind of information. It was like, oh, you know, the heptagon. One, it's a little bit easier to spell than the other ones. <laughs> and um, when you take a look at this, the littler in, image right here, you know, it reminds me, it reminds me, when I first look at it, it reminds me of... Um, a dream catcher. That's kind of how they're made. Yeah. And here it is up here and how it lies between the vesica Pisces or it lies within the vesica Pisces, I'm sorry, between the two spheres, the two circles. How cool is that? Right? And then you have that the the spiral kind of in the center there, spiraling up. Or spiraling in, depending on how you look at it, right? All right, so heptagon, heptagon. I'm gonna it, it meet Francine Hart, who is the author of this deck, um, gives the, the the meaning of harmony to the heptagon. Harmony. She says that it's a seven sided polygon of veneration. It represents movement through cycles, movement through cycles. And so that's why she has the spiral in the background, moving through cycles. Um, you know, and, and we have seven, there's seven in a lot of things, right? There is uh, seven days a week, right? There's um, the Kalindalini, seven chakras, just to name a couple, but I'm sure there's, there's, you guys could probably think of even more items that have the seven in it, right? And um, numerology, seven is about spirit. It's about spirit. She says, sound and music are intimately connected to sacred geometry. And the number seven, um, and through the harmonies created by music, we're able to connect with the music of spheres. And where she gets the magic from is that she um, said, seven weaves its way through mythology as Athena used a seven-sided symbol to weave her ma magical exploits. Magical exploits. I like that. She says, uh, Francine says, this card sees that you're looking for harmony and the cycles of your life. Each action you take creates harmony or discord. Okay, so each action we take creates harmony or it creates discord. And another way to say that every action, every decision we make, there's a consequence. A consequence can be a positive consequence or a negative consequence, depending what our what our decision was and our action to that decision. She says your days are a progression of harmonious movements through time. Don't you like that sentence? Let me say that again. Your days are a progression of harmonious movement through time. 
Allow your existence to become a symphony in celebration of a beautiful, of the beauty of living. A symphony in celebration of the beauty of living. So, you know, when we were doing the sacred path cards, and the information coming from those cards. Um, we were talking about, um, in some of the cards, they talk about our, our conscious thoughts and how our actions, um, when they align, when they're, it's about integrity, right? Our thoughts and our actions are the same. That's integrity. And you could say, that, that integrity is harmony. You could say that. Maybe not in, you know, all across the broad spectrum, but in, in the, the microcosm, we could say that integrity is harmony. That when we have um, flow is balanced and our our actions and our words are the same. Yeah. Now, you know, it's still, you, you still have that decision to make of, are you going to do good with your gifts or are you going to do a negative with your gifts, um, with your thoughts? You know, and that's why I said that in the broad spectrum, it might not hold completely true um, about the harmony. But literally, you know, we have the ability to make that choice, um, to make that choice of whether or not it's going to be harmonious or, or discord. And in our in our human moments, in our human moments, we may have that that thought, that fleeting thought that is that would end up being a discord, right? Yeah, Lisa Ashton. Hello, Lisa. She says she's uh, a medium and intuitive psychic. Love to do readings, especially over the phone. So you're doing, oh, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that, Lisa. So you're kind of doing a, um, uh, yeah, a little bit of a sharing what you do. Yeah, there's a, you know, in Star Nation's community, we have so many healers and light workers and, um, people who do readings and of all kinds, of all kinds. And it's kind of nice that we have that ability to share, isn't it? That's really nice. Yep. And Nan, Nan Hunt is here. Good morning, Nan. Elise says, um, I, th I thought it was a hexagon. Uh, yeah, kind of when you first look at it, doesn't it? Nope, it's a heptagon. There's seven sides, seven sides. Heptagon. And Francine relates that to harmony. Harmony. Yeah. Excellent. Let's see. Yeah. Want to scroll down. There we go. I was stuck there for a minute. All right. And Julia is saying seven classic planets of ancient skies where we get our days of the week. Thanks for that. Um, Julie, because um, I was thinking about the planets, but I thought there's more than seven. But you're saying seven classical planets, classical. So the ancients would have would have only seen the seven, right? Would have known about the seven. Excellent. Yep. And Julie says seventh house of astrology, uh, Libra, harmony and peace, marriage partnerships and projections. See, there is that harmony, right? That's probably where Francine was was uh, getting her information through. Elise says, I still believe actions speak louder than words. That I do too. I do too. Um, our behavior tells so much more than what we can say. And, you know, um, growing up, that was one of the things that my Misho kind of kind of talked to me about, my grandfather is that he said, you know, um, people can say just about anything. It's, you, it's when you have to watch their behavior. How do they act? Do their actions support the words, right? And um, or are they, are they different? And, he's, and he used to say that, um, 
is that you have to look at a person's heart. If, they're, if their actions are coming from their heart, um, yeah, they're doing this in a good way, right? Yeah, I can hear, I can almost hear his voice. Um, yeah, he, he used to say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. It doesn't matter the color of their eyes or their hair. What matters is their heart. That's what matters. And, um, and if their actions are um, supported, come from their heart, I should say. And then, then you have someone who's doing, doing it in a good way. Yeah. Julie's saying, before they saw Uranus on out, I see. They probably sensed it, I bet, hey? They sensed it. Ooh, I sounded really Wisconsin there, didn't I? Or maybe even Canadian. <laughs> oh my gosh. See when I get it when when I got got this, I grabbed on to what Julie said and he was like, yeah. And then you could hear the Wisconsin and or the it almost sounded Canadian. Um so they 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 probably sensed the other planets, but they didn't see it with their with their eyes or with their their um their tools. You know, I'm sure they probably had some way of looking out at the planets. Elise is saying, with all of all of all your healers, etc., there there may be a case like me. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, Elise, I know you're joking around about that, but you have you make a point there. Is that um, that's that's about our discerning, right? How we discern and. Sometimes, sometimes, like most of the time, is we sense it, that something is incongruent, something's not quite right with this picture, before we can actually put our finger on it. And, um, and that's about discerning. And when we talk about discerning, then we have to talk about um, trusting your intuition, having some self-confidence in how you take in information. Um, and so there, there's a whole lot of, lot connected to that. And so when, as, because we, we feel the energy long before the person even says anything. Long before. And, and so, um, so the clearer our energy is, the more healing that we do, and our vibration is closer to as close as we can get to the original vibration that we came in with, people feel that. Feel it before you even open your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't, didn't, didn't you ever do that? That, you know, you, you just met somebody, you don't know them, and yet you feel comfortable with them, right? That's us sensing the energy. Mm-hmm. Julia saying, uh, sun, sun, moon, moon, sun, moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Mar Day, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Thursday, Friday, and these are in Latin, I take it, and then Saturday. Absolutely. Thank you, Julie, for, for pulling that together for us. I know that's, that is your first language, you say, right, is the, the astrology. Um, and she's also saying, yet energetically sensing, Uranus was discovered at the time of the French and American revolutions. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa's love and miss you, Jules. Yeah, we certainly do. Uranus, Julia's saying, Uranus is about revolution, enlightenment, and service to humanity. Uh, and it moves really slow, right? Because he's one of one of those big planets way, way out on the, on the edge. All right, so <clears throat> back to the heptagon. Heptagon. <clears throat> um, Francine also writes that once you decide you want to correct a discord, let's say your 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 words or your actions um, create uh, create discord rather than harmony. And she says once it's been created, you can decide to correct it. The method will come to you easily once you make the decision to correct it. It's in desiring change and harmony that you create it. So setting the intention, setting the intention that, um, that my decisions and my actions, 
my thoughts create harmony are yeah that create harmony i like that now let's i want to share just a little bit about this little the little image over here on this oops over here on the side this one to me when i first looked at the card it looked like a dream catcher to me I'll bring it a little bit closer because that that basically that is how a dream catcher is made it's got the open center you know in the dream catcher um it, it's pretty much all the way across all the uh, the indigenous nations here um, in the United States on Turtle Island, um, it's been picked up by many people all the way across. But the Dreamcatcher, the um, the story actually originated in the Upper Midwest um, with the Ojibwa, also known as the Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. And um, and the creating of the weave. The weave of the universe, of the world. Um, there goes those planes again. And the, um, the hole in the center is for the dreams to come, to come through. The, the good dreams and the, um, the nightmares or the night terrors or the uh, scary dreams, you know, those are the ones that get caught in the web and they don't come through. And so um, they to be able to hang a dream catcher in a window in the room that you sleep in, in the room that you sleep in, is um, is supposed to enhance good uh, a good night's rest, right? And um, I used to have one hanging in my car. My mom, my mom used to make these all the time, um, and she made me one. I uh, had uh, white feathers and turquoise beads on the inside of the weave. Uh, and um, Nicole, Nicole Werner, sometimes you'll see her in, in the live chat. Um, one of her children was having bad dreams, you know, and she was asking me about where she could get a good dream catcher. And she, then she explained to me what was going on. So I went out to my car and I took the dream catcher off my the, my mirror, my rear view mirror, and handed it to her. I said, this will at least um, help until you can find a dream catcher that you really want to be able to hang in her window so she could keep even through adulthood if she wanted to. Um, and so, you know, they, and I see them hanging in, in a lot of rear view mirrors around here. I don't know if you guys see that where you live, but around here, we, I certainly see it quite often. Um, but the dream catcher, the dream catcher is, um, you know, they, it's a belief. And it's uh, something that, that I happen to know works. <laughs> first-hand experience, first-hand knowledge. Yeah, dream catchers. And with the heptagon, I like the heptagon. Like I said, I've never worked with a heptagon. And to be able to, to read something new, I love it. Now, the second, the second card that came, which in the card layout is on the left-hand side, in the energies of the female. So we're taking in the information through our heart, through our emotions, through our intuition, right? And... Um, so here is the second card. I like this card. It's called Mayan Dream. I'm going to hold it up here just for a little bit so you guys can really take in the image. You see the young woman sleeping, right, or resting. And in the background, you see uh, a pyramid, a Mayan pyramid. You see the swirl, spiral. And then you see the um, what looks like a square, but it's not. It's uh, it's another spiral. If you take a look, it's on the red lines. And if you go, it, it's it actually spirals in toward the center. And this is the spirals. The one in the background um, is one that we're probably more familiar with, with the curved lines. 
um, the square one is actually masculine, a masculine spiral. Yeah, that is, that, there's a lot going on in this picture. I like the colors too. Mayan dream. Mayan dream. Um, Francine calls it the spiral and cosmic connection. Cosmic connection. Yeah. I like it. So <clears throat> um, here's what Francine has to say about that. She says spirals compose the most basic geometry of life and speak to us on a level of our deepest knowing. So it touches that ancient part of us. Spirals both curve and move in an angular fashion. This card contains both curved and angular spirals. The design at the top and the sides is painted on a wall in the ruined Mayan city of Palenque in Chiapas, Mexico. So it's the, the, the three images left and right and at the top is an image that was taken from an ancient ruin, an ancient Mayan city. She says it's symbolic of the beginning, the germination, the essence, and the seed of which all life springs. So it's kind of like the void, right? That's how she 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 defines the void, is the place of uh, where the formless takes form. Um, it's the platonic solids, the building blocks of all life at the very beginning. She says, in the background is the temple of inscriptions. The temple contains the tomb of the Mayan king Pekal the Great, whose sarcophagus has been the subject of much research and conjecture. She says, in choosing this card, we're asked to enter dream time and find the inner journey to our spiral beginnings. So when I read that, I had to sit with it just for a little bit. And I had to take in what she meant by your spiral beginnings. On one hand, she could be talking about this physical life. As we came in as an embryo, right? Going through the mitosis, the cell division. Yeah. And I thought about, no, we're going back even further. We're going back even further. We're going back to our soul's inception. Where was our soul created, born, so to speak? You know, here, here we do a lot of, um, on earth, uh, there's people who are trained, um, and teach classes and retreats um, for birthing, rebirthing, rebirthing. So basically it's going back to um, your your physical birth to work through um, and, he and heal aspects. And, it, you know, if you have you ever been through a rebirthing um, exercise or therapy, rebirthing, it, it can get kind of intense. It can get intense, um, depending on what kind of um, birth you had, right? And, uh, and so the, those trained practitioners um, help you th break through, literally have a breakthrough, a healing um, when you go back to your physical birth. But I really believe that this is the feeling I got that Francine was actually asking us to go back to the inception of our soul, our inception, and that we can, um, through meditation, is to go back. And it might take a while to get comfortable with that because, you know, either you, either you could be very excited to find out where or maybe it makes you a little anxious, you know. Um, you can also do it through hypnotherapy, if you know a good hypnotherapist. 
um, they can lead you through that. Mm-hmm. Elisa is saying, I, tr- I truly believe in the Native American way as my great grandmother was Cherokee, but I have horrible nightmares almost every night. So m- maybe you need a dream catcher. Do you have one, Elise? Yeah. Um, if you don't, you know, I'll try and get um, a resource listed in the comments so that you can you can get one or um maybe what i can because everything's on youtube now uh find the youtube um and you can make your own it, it, i've never made one <laughs> i have a whole lot of family members who do uh, who know how do they actually do it probably not um, my youngest brother knows how my mom taught him of course my mom used to make them and she also taught um, the granddaughters. And I think out of all the granddaughters, I think only one is actually has actually made them. I don't think Erin has any extra. I can find out, but um, I can ask. I can ask if she has any. Um, but I know mom, mom doesn't make them anymore. Yeah. Um, and so traveling back, um, to your soul's inception. Now, how I found out about mine um, is I was investigating different forms of astrology. This was several years ago um, when we were teaching um, certification courses in, in feng shui and space clearing. There was a component where we had to um, had to use a form of um, astrology. Um, along with the feng shui, right? Because that that completes, it's a complete um, tool of feng shui. And um, uh, astrology is not one of my allies. (laughs) It's, it's, it's hard for me to keep the information in my head. And, you know, to to know it, like Julie, just off, you know, the cuff kind of thing. Um, I, I have to actually look it up every single time. Um, and to the point that my dyslexia, when I get tired, it's numbers that get flipped. Um, but my dyslexia would come out with the with the glyphs, trying to to recognize the glyphs. And when I would see it, it, it would look one way and I'd look again and it would be flipped. Um, and so <clears throat> I stopped struggling with it. I, I find really good astrologers to, um, to help me, and Julie being one of them. Um, early on, though, when I was investigating, the, there's a lot of different astrology out there. <clears throat> and um, I was, um, um, what's her name? Shirley McLean. She has an uh, astrologers on her website that she recommends. And so I used one of those just to test it out. And it was esoteric astrology and uh, just to see what it was like. And so, you know, you had to had to send, also send them a question, an inquiry of what you would like the reading to be about. And so um, I asked, I said, where was my soul conceived? Where did, where did I start? And, um, and so anyway, in the reading, uh, the astrologer um, said that, you know, it was uh, Cirrus and gave me a whole bunch of information about Cirrus and and my connection from here to there and, um, yeah, the culmination, the culmination over a lot of past life, um, soul growth, and this the gifts that I can pull forward from... That's when I believed in past lives. I believe everything is parallel. <laughs> and so pull, pulling all of that information into this particular life. Um, and knowing that, you know, it's, it, it, it's not necessary after this earth life to, to actually have another one. Um, that there's a very strong chance that my next life will be on a different, will be at Cirrus, a different planet um, than Earth. Um, and and then after my life is complete with that one, that then I will have the option um, not to have to come back and do it again. 
you know. So it kind of makes me happy. <laughs> and, you know, and knowing that to stay on track, right, to have a focus. <clears throat> so back to the card. It's the Mayan dream. It was a second card. And Francine goes on to say that this is the dream that connects microcosm and macrocosm. This is a dream that will help you realize your place in the universe. Not small or insignificant, but an integral part of the glorious whole. I like that. A glorious whole. So both cards, actually. Um, one's about harmony. And the other one's about the cosmic connection and the spiraling. And the way that, that Francine talks about spirals in the Mayan dream, right? She says that, uh, the, that uh, spirals compose the most basic geometry of life and speak to us on a level of our deepest knowing. Spirals. You know, when you think of spirals, you know, there's so many different ones. I think of um, our galaxy. Do you ever see pictures of the galaxy and how it spirals out? And you can see the arms in that spiral. Um, that's the one I went to when, when I saw the word cosmic connection and spiral. <clears throat> The Mayan dream. So we can go back, back to the, our, our individual original beginnings, the soul. And so we can, we can sense how we're part of the whole, that we're not just a fragment of it, that we're, that we're integral, right? Hey, Aaron, Aaron. Good morning, first of all. I'm so glad you could join us. And we have a question. This is the first card that was drawn. Whoops, upside down. The first card that was drawn, the heptagon. And do you see the image over here on the end, this one? I said that it kind of reminded me of um, a dream catcher. And... Um, that there are some family members that were taught by by grandma um, how to make dream catchers, and you're one of them. Um, we have somebody in the chat, Elise, who um, is having nightmares. And I said, I asked her if she had um, a dream catcher. And if she didn't, that I was going to try to find some resources and put it in the chat after we were finished. Um, <clears throat> I said, I know that you used to make them. I don't know if you have any on hand or not. Um, but I was going to contact you and find out if you did. I know you're very busy. I know you're very busy. Um, Aaron's running for uh, Wisconsin State Senate. Yeah. And here in, in, and uh, so we're very excited about that. But she's also very busy with her campaign. So um, I'm not sure. She says, she says, hola, <laughs> como estas, right? Um, good morning. Yes, it does look like a dream catcher. Yeah, it does. Um, I, like I said, I don't know if you have any extra on hand. Um, if you do, you know, just let us know and we'll try to hook you and Elise up if Elise is, um, if she would like one or not. You know, it's up to her, up to you guys. Just trying to make, have somebody um, have some good sleep. So um, these two cards, right? This one is is in on the male side, so we're taking it in with our mental mind. This one was on the left hand side of the card draw, and that is the female side. And so when you put them together, this is what Francine Hart has done, the author, is that when you put the information together, it's coming to us in a balanced way, the balance between male and female. And so we bring in that information in, in its wholeness. And that's with a W, <laughs> W-H. Um, and so we're bringing it into our awareness um, in, a, in a holistic way. And so with these two cards, 
Um, the heptagon is about harmony. The heptagon is about harmony. And the Mayan dream is about going back to the very beginning, about cosmic connection and the spiral. That we're at being asked to find the inner journey, the inner journey for our spiral beginnings. And so I took that as where our soul was started, where it was conceived. Because it's, it's possible that your soul, that the creator, the prime creator, created your soul um, here uh, for planet Earth. Um, but there's, there's a lot of other galaxies and planets out there that maybe that's where we're from. And that's why we're called star seeds, because we're from... Our, our soul is, in, in, is conceived in other, from other planets, right? Mary Summers is here. Good morning, Mary. Uh, Julie says, congratulations to Erin for running for office. Erin, she says, no problem. I can make one. It would be out of natural materials, no metal. All right. So at least um, if you can uh, friend Erin and then you guys can private message and, and deal with that on your own, huh? Yeah, that's good. I'll let you guys have a, have that conversation, huh? I don't need to be in the middle of it. I'm just glad you guys can help each other. <laughs> All right, so taking in this information for the intention for the card draw every morning is what energy is most important for us to know about today. And so looking at these two cards, one's about harmony and one's about going back to the beginning, the root, where our soul was conceived, right? And with the harmony, she was talking about how our actions are our decisions um, and our actions that we can create harmony or we can create discord. Now, I truly believe that our soul, our vibration, our song um, is in harmony. That um, when we do our healing work, when we heal those aspects of ourselves, our emotional and mental traumas, um, that and when, when we remove interference and um, bar barriers or blocks to our gifts, is that we begin to vibrate closer to our original song. And in that is still harmony, that what we're looking for is peace and harmony, right? And so I think with these two cards, I believe, this is my feeling, is that the energy for today is about knowing ourselves and creating harmony. We're all creators. Every single one of us, we just have to decide what we want to create. And if we want to create harmony, what better way than to um, to find out more about our own about our, our own beginnings, right? And how we contribute to the the uh, the greater the greater whole. Yeah, that's my take on it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Which one, you know? We resonate either with it or not, and it's okay if you don't. But if you resonate with it, see what I, the, oops, wrong one, <laughs> this one. You know, why do I resonate with this one? Well, a lot of it has to do with Mexico. And so there, I have an ancestry. My dad was from Mexico. My grandparents were from Mexico. You know, I look at that, that pyramid in the background and it reminds me of a dream I had years ago. It was right after we moved here. And I was uh, in this, this dream, I was walking up this pyramid and the stairs, the steps were, of course, stone. And I was, I was walking up this, these steps. And I knew that I was um, soul traveling. <laughs> and 
and in bounds my dog, Ginger, at the time. And uh, I told her she had to go home and she wouldn't go home, right? And um, who appeared next to me was a good friend of mine that worked at the state, Sherry. And Sherry and I, we, we would take our breaks together and we talk about spiritual stuff all the time. And Sherry popped in and, um, and she goes, oh, I'll take her home for you. You know, because I trusted Sherry and um, always did because Sher Sherry walked down a few years ago. Um, and so she, she was able to take Ginger home for me. And, uh, and so I continued up, up the, the stairs. But that, this pyramid in the background is, reminds me of that dream. Yeah. And so that's exactly what Francine is asking through this card for us to do is that we go back. We climb the pyramid and we go back to our very beginnings. Our very beginnings where our soul was conceived. Yeah. And for those, those who have Irish or Celtic backgrounds, yeah, that's in your ancestry you might want to take a look at that spiral because on the Celtic wheel, um, on the Celtic wheel, the entrance, well, you can enter anywhere on, on the wheel, but they use the cross quarters. That's where you find Samhain um, in October, which is Halloween. And, you know, their, their um, high holy days are on the cross quarters, the cross winds, and they spiral in. They don't, it's not a straight line, not like the, the, um, the cardinal points. Those are straight lines. Um, when you come in in the cross quarters, you're spiraling in and you spiral out. And so if you, if you've ever studied with Amantha Murphy, she'll, you'll hear her talk about this um, and ask her, um, if you're studying with her in October, ask her about that, that spiraling in and spiraling out. And I do believe that um in our in our hereditary in our dna we do carry that kind of information it looks and feels familiar to us and so why not use it why not tap into it right to find out to go to go there to go there all right. Yeah, Erin says she loves our roots. Yes, I do too. Um, and so with the energy for today, you know, watching it, being aware of it, watch how it unfolds. How does it flow to you? What do you see in it? Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that when I do this, it's like I'm looking for, okay, am I participating in it? Am I a direct participant? Is it directly affecting me or am I a witness to it? <laughs> uh, Paul just showed up. Uh, are you a witness to it? Because either way, you're learning something. It, it's meant for you to either be a part of or to see, right? Um, and if it resonates with you, that's fantastic. Grab onto it, hold on to it, and see what it has for you. What's your gift in it? Um, and if it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay too. You can just let it go. You know, you could be saying, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> I don't get it. And that's all right. You don't have to. You don't have to resonate with it. I always say that maybe we're just planting seeds or possibly you're a messenger. You're a messenger. You, you can share the recorded video with somebody that you might know that is looking for information or you think might enjoy the information, find some value in it, right? So you can do that, but you don't necessarily have to hold it for yourself. <laughs> Want to come say hi? Oh, God, he's camera shy. When did you ever know Paul to be shy? I don't think I've ever known him to be shy. So anyway, um, you can either... Um, all I'm saying is, you know, just notice. Notice how it's unfolding to, for you today. Um, and before before I say uh, Bama Mina, Polly Joe, P 
Holly Jo LeBay has a show tonight. It's called Soul Connections, and it, it's at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. And that particular, uh, it's an, an hour and a half of healing and divine messages. Um, Polly Jo creates the sacred space for us to work with our individual spiritual teams um, to heal those aspects that are important for us to heal. Okay. So um, you can go in with your own intention, individual intention. Um, and to work with your guides with that, your team, your team. And then she does a card draw. And that's always, that's in, so insightful, you know. So I'll be there. You can see you in the, uh, be a part of it in the live chat. Um, so that's tonight at 7 p.m. Right? Yeah. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And we'll see you tomorrow for the card draw. And until then, Bama Mina. That's Potawatomi. That means until we see each other again. Okay? Love you guys.